Okay, I think I am prepared. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Good morning. Hi. It's so nice to see you all this morning. And um, it's so nice to be in God's presence together. I keep, oh, the, the one verse that I read this week that stuck with me, especially because so many people um, that are at home, some are sick, some have lost loved ones. Um, when God promised Sarah that one day she'd have a child, when it finally happened, she laughed. And she said, God has made me laugh. And so this morning, I'm thinking of Salome, Monique and them, and um, I think my prayer will be that God will just bring laughter even in this season. Um, but let's close our eyes. Father, you are so faithful. You are the one who makes us laugh. Because in your presence, there's fullness of joy. And it's not because anything in our circumstances has changed particularly, but because your faithfulness remains in whatever seasons we go through. My God, this morning, Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that worship is such a, a celebration of who you are to us. Help us to remember when we look back at this week, at all the places where you've shown up for us, where you've been with us, where you've held us, my God. I pray for all the families that are in mourning at this moment, for everyone who's maybe not feeling so great. I pray that you would help them to rejoice and to um, have a moment of joy, even there. Oh Lord, as your word is spoken, Help us to hear it and let it change us deeply, all to the glory of your name, that we may proclaim your goodness to those around us. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Why don't you stand and we'll worship together. I fix my eyes upon the cross. I'm reaching out with all I've got. I'm letting go to start again. I need your love, that's why I'm here. Waiting outside my life to call. But while I'm here, I'll give my all. You are my peace within the storm. Here at the cross, I find my home. Sing, you are greater. You are greater, Jesus. You are greater than it all. You are greater, Jesus. You are greater than it all. Than it all. Your grace and mercy found me. Oh, the blood of Jesus is greater. It's your grace. Your grace and mercy found me. Oh, the blood of Jesus is greater. Lord, I believe you rose again. So I don't believe this is the end. You never fail, you have a plan. My life you hold within your hands. And I walk by faith. 
And I walk by faith and not by sight. You are my source, you are my light. In you I live, I will not die. You stretch these wings, now I can fly. You are greater. You are greater, Jesus. You are greater than it all. You have overcome. You are greater, Jesus. You are greater than it all. Than it all. Your grace and mercy found me. Oh, the blood of Jesus is greater. Your grace and mercy found me. Oh, oh the, the blood, blood of Jesus is greater. Lord of hosts, you're with us. Lord of hosts, you're with us. You're with us in the fire. You're with us as a shelter. You're with us in the
Yes, your grace and mercy found me. Oh, the blood of Jesus is greater. No mountain, no valley, no gain or loss we know could keep us from your
No matter where I am, healing is in your hands. How deep? How deep? Oh, how strong. By your grace, I stand. Healing is in your hands. Now, by your grace, I stand. Healing is in. provider, Jehovah Rapha, our healer. It is you, Nisi. It is you, Jesus. It is you, Emmanuel, here by your spirit. 
We adore you with everything we are this morning. As we come to you this morning with our tithes and offerings, we want to ask you, Lord Jesus, that you bless them, that you make them worship and not just money, that you multiply them, that you bring a harvest with them in Jesus' name. As we lift up our hands, will you meet us here? As we call on your name, will you meet us here? Because we have come to this place to worship you, God of mercy and grace. It is you, your door. It is you, we adore, it is you, our praises are for only you, the heavens declare, it is you, Jesus, it's you. Holy, holy is our God Almighty. Holy, holy is His name alone. Holy, holy is our God Almighty. Holy, holy. It is you, our praises are for only you, the heavens declare. It is you, Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you. We want to invite the kids. Is that right? It's time for the kids to escape. Kids, you're welcome to have a run down there. Out that door. There you go. Look at her go. Have a run down that way and join our Sunday school guys. We're going to keep worshiping. Sheldon, do you have any announcements or do you want to keep worshiping? We're going to keep going. It is you we adore. It is you our praises are for. Only you the heavens declare. It is you. I don't know how to say exactly how I feel. I can't begin to tell you what your love has meant. I'm lost for words. Is there a way to show the passion in my heart? Can I express how truly great I think you are, my dearest friend? Lord, this is my desire to pour my love on you. 
like oil upon your feet, like wine for you to drink, like water from my heart. I pour my love on you. If praise is like perfume, I lavish mine on you till every drop is gone. I pour my
will bow my life at your feet, at your feet. My lips so lost for words will kiss your feet, will kiss Pour my love on you and if praise is like perfume, then I lavish mine on you till every drop is gone. I pour my before you, Lord Jesus, not just our songs. We pour out our lives before you, not just our songs, for this is worship. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you make us living sacrifices. That the fragrance of our hearts would be pleasing to the Lord, would be pleasing to our Savior, 
Help us, Holy Spirit, to worship in spirit and in truth. We're going to sing one more time. It is you we adore. It is you our praises are for. And as we do this, we ask you, Holy Spirit, that you make our lives yours. And every hidden part of our life, every part that is not yours, that you would put your finger on, on it, and that we would be able to give it to you. Doubts and insecurities, lies of the enemy, secret sins. She would put it on us. It is you we adore. It is you our praises are for. Only you the heavens declare. It is you it is you one more time it is you we adore it is you our praises are for only you the heavens declare it is you it is you. Lift your voices now. Holy, holy. Holy, holy is our God Almighty. Holy, holy is His name alone. Holy, holy is our God Almighty. Holy, holy is His name alone. It is You. We adore. As You are holy, we will be holy. It, it is, is you. you. Our praises are for only You. The heavens declare. It is You. It is you, it is you, one more time, we adore, really last time, it is you, our praises are for only you, the heavens declare, it is you. Jesus, it's you. it's you. All God's people said amen. As we go into your word now, Lord Jesus, we ask that you would help us to worship you with the ears of our hearts, and the, uh, the, uh, yeah, our understanding, our brains, our attention, our spirit, our attitude, everything. Help us to worship you now in the word in Jesus' name. Good morning, everybody. So good to see you guys here this morning. So good to see all the kids go out to Sunday school, not because we want them out to church, but because we have an amazing team of um, teachers who just want to sow into their lives. But it's also nice to see those young people go out. And um, yeah, before we get into the Word this morning, did anybody feel the Lord saying something during worship and you'd like to share it this morning? You thought, if I get this opportunity, I'm going to share this Word. You've got something, my man. I could have put money on that. So, let's do that. Thank you, my man. The Lord is saying, it is finished. There we go. You got... Was there somebody over here? Ah, Carl. You're going to share what the Lord shared with you, hey? Okay. Good morning, everyone. It's on. 
Um, I just want to, I think this is a big deal because I'm, I turned 15 this, this week, 19th of, of the 7th of 72. So it's a big deal for me because of the God has saved me for this long. And he, is, he revealed to me that uh, he's got a lot of plans for me. He's got big plans for me. So yes, I am I'm blessed. Amen. Now, yeah, Lord, we pray for Carl as he turns 50 and really believes that you have a plan for his life. Lord, we pray that, um, that you would reveal it to him really, really clearly, Lord, and that he would know exactly what it is that he needs to do for you, Lord, that he would hear the voice saying, go left, go right, and that he would not miss any plan that you have for his life. Thank you, Jesus, for 50 years. Amen. Not too many people jump up here and boast about turning 50, hey? So, here we go, donkey, on, okay? Uh, the Lord just laid on my heart this morning to pray for the sick. So, um, this um, scripture in uh, John, the Gospel of John, um, chapter 1, verse, I, I'm, I'm just going to read from verse 1. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. And in Psalm 107, verse 20, uh, we read that the Lord says there, I sent my word and healed them. So uh, I really, uh, if, if there's anyone here that is sick or that wants to stand in the gap for someone that you know that is sick, please stand up. I am going to pray a prayer of faith for healing this morning for that person. Father, you see who is standing. You see who they are standing for. And if they are standing for themselves, you see them. And you know the illness in their bodies. You know those that are watching, Lord, um, who are at home, who are sick. We bring all those who are sick, various forms of illnesses, Lord. Some uh, suffer from uh, severe allergies. Some suffer from cancer. Some suffer from blood disease. Uh, some suffer from tumors. Lord, you know the illness. Lord, some suffer from depression, severe depression and darkness around them. Some suffer from uh, broken hearts, Lord. We bring all of them this morning, all of these in front of you, us, Lord. You can see them. Father, we bring them before you and we pray put our faith together this morning for healing, Lord. Father, for you, in your word says, I am the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Your healing still happens today. Miracles still happen today. Oh, Lord, so we ask that you will send your word into their bodies, every person standing, every person that they are standing for, that you will send your word into their bodies, your life, Lord, and that your light will go into the bodies, into every cell, and that you will destroy all cancer, that you will destroy all depression. Lord, no one can stand in your presence. We command every demon of infirmity to leave and to go to the feet of Jesus. Lord, release them, deliver them. Father, bring your healing. Let your healing flow like a river over all of us, Lord. Come and heal our hearts, Lord, from the brokenness. Come and heal us from our unforgiveness, Lord. Oh, Father, in this moment, if there's anyone that we have not forgiven, we forgive them. We set them free and we ask, Lord, Deliver us from our illnesses. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Donkey, Annika, 
Anybody else? I don't want you going home being like, oh, I should have. I knew that was the Lord speaking. Anybody else? Yes, sir. That's who we prayed for now. Yeah. We believe what Annika prayed yeah. is for him. Yes. Good morning. I just want to um, expand on what Michael was praying for, that um, God will expose the hidden things that we think we keep hidden, but God knows. <laughs> so we just fool ourselves. This is a new year, and we need new wineskins to go into this new year and new beginnings. So, And I know God's been dealing with me this um, beginning of this year, there's stuff that we need to just let go of. And we just think, ah, oh, God, and it just keeps coming up. But we don't want to go into a new year, year with the same stuff. So it's not just for a Sunday morning, it's for every day of the week. We need yeah. to spend time with God and say, God, reveal it to me. Maybe it's not even stuff we're doing. Maybe it's curses people have put on us because they're speaking of us. We don't even know. So we need to break those and pray, pray blessing on those people. So, yeah, I would encourage you. This is a new year, guys. We haven't finished the month yet. So let's spend this next week going into the new year with a new us. Amen. Thanks, Alison. Thanks so much. All right. I just want to, before I start uh, the word this morning, just want to thank the, the team of people that help every morning. Every Sunday morning, you know, you see the guys on the stage and you, then you see us standing in the front here, but there's a lot of people behind the scenes that actually uh, show up at church uh, as early as half past seven on a Sunday morning just to make sure that everything is right for the service. Um, and so I just want to thank the, the crew at the back there, I'm up at top, and everybody on cameras. I mean, these young people, um, they know things about computers that just um, blows my mind. I still think I'm going to teach them something, and then I realize I'm 20 steps behind them. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate all you guys. And, um, yeah, our TV screens were like five centimeters over the other day, and it was totally, I mean, totally boggled my mind how that could work. And then Ethan came and pushed one button, and the whole thing was fixed. And I'm just like, okay. Uh, yeah, so long as I learn something, eh, Ethan? So, yeah. Um, yeah. So last week, church, well, let's pray first. I know Michael's prayed for the word. But Lord, as we, as we pray for the word this morning, we pray for our hearts as well to receive. We're talking about the value of seed. And just, um, we thank you, Lord, that you trust us with the seed. And that you allow us to be sowers of the seed. And and so we, we're just grateful for that, Father. I, I'm humbled by, by the fact that you give me seed to sow every single day. And Lord, I pray that as we hear this word, because we're reading out of your word this morning, Lord, I pray that it would, it would speak to us, Lord, and that uh, as, as we hear the truth and, and we receive revelation, that it would set us free, we pray in Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, may I not say anything that doesn't line up with the Word of God. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So last week we talked about the value of seed. If you were here last week, you got one of these packets. I actually saw one lying here still. You got one of these little packets with uh, millies in and uh, seeds. And uh, I don't know if any of you went home and planted. And uh, I snuck into my wife's veggie garden and planted a few. And uh, so um, uh, random places just to see if they come up. And, uh, but um, yeah, so if you planted them and you, they're coming up, then uh, have they come up yet, Alison? Not yet. Okay. You know you've got to water hey, and talk to them. You've got to sing to them as well. So. so we talked last week about the value of seed and the potential of seed and and, and that we are the sowers of seed, and it's God that makes it grow. And, and last week I just shared that I think the reason that God makes it grow is because He knows the value of seed, and He takes that job for Himself, that He makes it grow. 
And then he gives us the job just of sowing the seed. Also, the timing of the growth of the seed. You know, that, that scripture we read last week was that the seed grows whether the man is, is awake or asleep. He doesn't know how it grows, but that it first starts off, there's a leaf, and then it, it just grows until it's ready for the harvest. And I want to say to you this morning, as you sow seed, as you, as, as you, you go out there and just give, don't worry about the growth of the seed. Remember God makes it grow. Don't say this is not growing fast enough for me. Because at the right time, God will make that grow. So we must never get despondent about the fact that maybe we've, we've sowed time into somebody or energy or the word of God and we're just not seeing any fruit in their life. Don't give up because God makes it grow. Your job is to sow the seed. And you never know what comes out. You never know what they're hearing, what they're seeing you do. You never know. You just carry on sowing seed. God makes it grow. So don't get despondent. Um, yeah. So last week, uh, we asked, what is in your basket? What is in your basket? And I don't know if any of you went home and searched and asked God, God, what is in my basket? What is it, those things that you've given me to sow? And, um, and uh, I want to say with that that we are called, we have this basket not to collect seed, but to sow seed from, okay? We are not called to store seed. We are called to sow seed. We can never store seed. We have to sow it. You know what happens if you store seed too long? So uh, I remember one time somebody gave us some milli meal for, for all the ministries that we do in and around Petra Tief. And I remember the guy on a Sunday morning, I was standing there and he said, Sheldon, I've, I bought some, some milli meal that you can hand out. So I said, oh no, thanks, man. And he said, yeah, I bought you, I forget the number, but it's like, I bought you 12 kg bags. I th and he, I think he said, there's, there's like... Um, 2,000 of them or something. No, it must have been more than that if I do the math quickly. But anyway, it was, it was more like 16,000 bags. And I just looked at the guy and I said, wow, thank you very much. And he looked at me and he said, Sheldon, you know, you don't have any idea how much that is, hey? And I said, no, I actually don't. I mean, my brain's trying to do the math, but I can't picture it. He said, well, let me give you the picture. On Tuesday morning, a, an interlink will stop outside the church with 40 tons of millimeal. I was like, wow. I don't know if you guys remember us packing it. Yeah, had bits forklift working overtime, loading them in the church. And we had that milli meal. Can you imagine if we stored that milli meal for ourselves? And we just kept it there. And every Sunday we were just like, look at God's blessing. Wow. And we just looked at it every Sunday and we were like, man, we are so, so blessed. Man, it's three years down the line. Let me tell you that those, that milli meal would be fraught by now. There would be bugs in this church like it's nobody's business because of that. We are not called to store seed. We are called to sow seed. And we need to remember that. So we, we talk, I said last week that we're going to talk a little bit about what's in our basket, this seed. Because when it comes to sowing and giving, people always get nervous in church. They're like, oh, I'm sure this is another sermon on tithing. Hey, this is, the, the pastor's going to preach on tithing. They want more money. So. But that's not what this is about. Because yes, money is something God gives us to sow. But there's other things too. And I just mention a few here. The word of God, the word of God is seed. Jesus says it. When he explains the parable of the sower, he says, the seed is the word of God. So you choose what you do with the word of God. You can either store it in the corner or you can sow it. But Sheldon, I don't know much of the Word of God. Well, sow the, the little bit that you know. Sow it into somebody's life. Because you never know what that seed does. That seed will germinate. Even a 2,000-year-old date palm. So the Word of God, every possession that I have, we shared last week that every possession we have, we agreed that it belongs to God. Well, I agreed with myself that it belongs to God. He's given it to us. I used a few scriptures. I'm kind of hoping I convinced you. But everything we have belongs to God. So that's in our basket too. 
the gift that the Holy Spirit gives us, those are in our basket to sow, to speak into people's lives. Service. I shared last week about the lady who said she didn't know what to do for people, but all she knows is to make food for them. She served them. She was giving. She was sowing seed into their lives. The love that is accompanied by that, by that seed, she doesn't know what a difference it makes. And then the one thing that is so, so super, super precious to us. It's almost more precious than money. Anybody want to guess what it is? Sorry? Time. Time. You have time in your basket that you can sow. Time. We hold on to that sometimes more than money. So uh, have you guys got that scripture ready? I'm going to read you guys a scripture this morning. And um, you can turn there in your Bible so long. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 16 to 15. Oh, these guys are organized. My glasses are for co close. Tough being pregnant, eh, Cerise? Is it hot? <laughs> they say being pregnant is not for sissies, but it's only the sissies that fall pregnant. So. Second Corinthians 9, verse 6 to 15. It's the one that I wrote down. What did I write? Well, now you know I'm not perfect. Shucks. I had my daughter for 16 years. She thought I was perfect. Now she knows the truth. Sorry about that, guys. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 15. And I was so proud of you guys. Okay, you guys sorted. Okay, as we read this scripture, I want you to think about, it's about giving. But nowhere does it just, I mean, it doesn't say the scripture is exclusively for money. Hey? So you can use the scripture for anything that we give. Okay, He's talking to the church then about the gift that they're going to give. Ooh, I should maybe turn to the right verse here too. He's talking about the gift that they're going to be giving. And then he shares this. So I want you to think about the possessions you have, time, service, the word, okay, as we read the scripture. You guys ready? Right, let's go. Verse 6. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. I don't need to explain that to anybody, hey? We all understand that. Okay, if you keep it for yourself, well, enjoy. Okay. I'm going to try that with chocolate today with my kids. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. We've been saying that in this church for many, many years. Pastor Len would say, man, if you're not cheerful, keep your misery, he would say. And it's like, oh, I can't believe he said that. But it's, it's scripture. We don't want to force anybody to give anything. Man, go search God. Say, God, if this is in my basket, what can I give? And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. God is able to make grace abound to you. Thank you, Jesus. Next uh, verse, please. As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but it is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of, the, uh, okay, because of this service by which you have proved yourselves, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, for you, their hearts will go out to you because of this, the surpassing grace of God has given you. I think that's the last one. Eh? Thanks be to God for his indescribable, indescribable gift. Okay, so this scripture is, is, is really just 
talking about giving and, uh, and the result of giving, the thanksgiving that's going to go out when it's accompanied. Man, it's, I, I read that one scripture where it's, it's talking about... Um, um, let me find it here quickly. Others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ. Imagine if we were hoarders, but we were talking about the grace of Jesus Christ. Hey? It just doesn't work. What you have, you give. Time, service, gifts of the Spirit. Whatever God's telling you to give. I'll read you another scripture in Proverbs. You guys don't have to try scramble and find it there. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. Hey? Doesn't that sound like, like um, kingdom principle, that? It's typical of God. He who gives, okay? So I've taken and I've given, so I've actually got less, yet he gains even more. And the one who holds, keeps all his stuff close, comes to poverty. And then I read the scripture, not to twist your arm or anything, but it says this, whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he will re reward them for what they have done. You know, I read uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 16 to 15, and um, the few things I just want to highlight out of that scripture I remember one, one day Miles was, um, Miles was playing. We lived in that house still. And then he stopped playing because he wanted to rest. He wanted to rest. And I said, Miles, why, what are you doing? Why don't you just go run around? I think little Rua was visiting, playing with him. And he said, no, no, no. I need to save my energy. I have to save my energy for tomorrow. And I said to him, Miles, don't worry about saving energy, buddy. When you go to bed tonight, man, you'll thank gets filled again. You, you will have energy tomorrow. But somehow in his mind, he, had, he figured that he only gets a certain amount of energy and he, he doesn't want to use it all up because what's he going to do if he's got no more energy? And, um, and, and verse 10 says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for, the food, uh, bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Isn't that so exciting? It's just like uh, the scripture I read in, in Proverbs eleven twenty four. But God promises this, that he who supplies the seed to us, our time, our possessions, our gifts, our service, or the, the, the love of service, love to service, serve people, he, he will supply and increase your store of seed as you give it away. As you sow seed, God supplies more. And He's encouraging us not to hoard. You are not called to sow, store seed. You are called to sow seed. I think that's just so exciting, that verse. Considering seed, if everything belongs to God, we can ask ourselves this question. If we read this, this, this um, chapter about um, giving generously, the seed that we are given, and, and, and you're asking that question, what is in my basket? What is in my basket? If you don't know what's in your basket yet, and you had the whole week to figure it out, and you're still not quite sure what is in your basket, come and see me, or let me know, and maybe I'll get somebody to pray with you. I don't necessarily have to pray with you. Maybe I can find somebody in the body of Christ that can pray with you, and we can just ask the Lord. Um, but when it comes to the seed that God's given us, because I think this, I think when it comes to tithing, okay, money is one of those things that we hold so dear. I think tithing is just practice for sowing. It just helps us let go so that we don't become hoarders. I think it's practice for sowing. 
So am I accountable with the seed? Am I disciplined? Am I honest? Am I diligent? Am I faithful? Am I trustworthy with everything the Lord gives me? We sow in love. We also have to sow in love. I was, as I was preparing, I was thinking about uh, 1 Corinthians 13, where it says, whatever we do, we can do anything, but if we don't do it in love, and prophecy is one of them, if we don't do it in love, it amounts to nothing. And prophecy is one of those things I believe we can sow. If you've been given the gift of prophecy, prophesy. What does it help if God gives me a word clearly for Wim Hunts and I keep it to myself? Have you ever wondered, would you, would, would you carry on giving me prophetic word if you knew I was just going to keep it for myself? If, if the, the guy who donated 40 tons of milli meal, if he came to church every Sunday and he's like, wow, they still got it. That's awesome. And somebody else gave us more and we just shoved it in the corner and we just kept it. Why would God give more? Remember that he supplies. He's the one who supplies. Your basket, I promise you, church, will never go empty. If God knows the value of seed, and we understand the value of seed, I believe we will sow more freely. We will sow more freely of our time. We will be more bold in, in, in um, giving the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given to us. Man, if you have a prophetic word for somebody and you're just too chicken, you're like, Sheldon, I've, I don't think I've ever felt a word for anybody. Man, come and speak to me. We'll go to that person. We'll pray about it. Then we'll go to that person and give it to them. I received a word this week um, through a couple of ladies, really was blessed by it because one of the things I've been praying for really, really hard and, um, and God answered it directly, not in a riddle or a picture of a fountain, sweet water flowing, directly answered the word. And I'm so grateful because I'm thinking if she gave out of her basket, the lady gave time, and then received the word and gave that word too. And if she had kept those things to herself, I would never have gotten that answer from God. And I pray that God blesses her for the time that she spent praying in this building to hear the word of the Lord and give it. So she gave twice. Man, Lord, I pray that you bless her doubly for what she did in our church and for giving. And that was just obedience. Words of knowledge, healing. Imagine you have this gift of healing, and we all have, I believe, the gift of healing because Jesus said we must go pray. Some are a little bit more, have it more than others, but, but we're all called to go pray for the sick. Imagine if you just kept it to yourself. Man, God supplies. I had so much fun this week. I made some ladies nervous. One was... Uh, you can get that video ready, Shelby. Um, and one lady was uh, in the church building and she, she was, was uh, sick. And so I said, hey, uh, I'm not a doctor, <laughs> but, but I, I do know how to pray. She said, oh, no, good. Will you, will you pray? So I said, yeah, I'll pray, but we're going we're to do it right now. And I could see that we're like, what's happening here? So I said, you guys have heard somebody pray before. We're just going to do it. We're just going to pray. And... Uh, it was so fun to give that gift. I had a little bit of a chuckle because I could see they were squirming. But um, it was so fun to give. Giving is fun. When you know that God has given you something and you use it, man, that's so, so rewarding. And uh, yeah, I, I see they still... How many of you have watched the, the movie Chariots of Fire? It's the, the running one, hey? So uh, some people are so anti-running, they'll probably never watch the movie. But um, I, I just want you to watch this clip, and we're going to have to make sure that the sound is there too. Yeah, go for it whenever you're ready. Whoa. Watch the sound not work today. I've decided I'm going back to China. 
The missionary service have accepted. <laughs> Just pause it quickly. Did you guys hear what he said? I've decided I'm going back to China. The mission has accepted me. Um, so he's, what is he, Scottish or Irish or something? I'll, I'll translate. But okay, carry on. <laughs> I've got a lot of running to do first. Jenny. Jenny, you've got to understand. I believe that God made me for a purpose. For China. He also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. To give it up would be to hold him in contempt. You were right. It's not just fun. To win is to honor him. Jenny. So, do you guys know that scene? So, he's talking to her about he's going to go on, on, on the mission to China, but first he's going to run. And he says, God made me fast. And then he said, when I run, I feel his pleasure. He knew God had given him something, and when he does it to the glory of God, he feels God's pleasure. Hey? Anytime you give a gift out to glorify God, you will feel his pleasure. He says, China will happen, but first I'm going to run. And he says, to win is to honor God. And basically, it's not just about getting the gold medal. For him, it was about doing it with all of his heart. So there's a scripture in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31. And I love this. I often pray it at, at meals where there are unbelievers, okay? Where people who don't know the Lord. I like to pray this prayer because I'm always asked to pray for meals. Do me a favor. If you ever invite me for a meal... Just because I'm a pastor, don't ask me to pray. My prayer is not more anointed than yours. Um, it's always nice to listen to other people pray. But I like to pray, add this to my prayer. And this is what I think, uh, it's Eric Little, hey? He says this. This is what he's saying. So whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. People don't understand that even in our drinking and our eating, we, if whatever we do, we must just do it for the glory of God. When you give your gift, when you give your seed, when you sow your seed, sow it to the glory of God. Sow it to a God that can make it grow, church. Don't sow it because you have to. Sow it because you want to glorify God and because you know He can make it grow and that He will make it grow at the right time and that there will be a harvest. Let me get another scripture for you guys. Galatians 6, 8 to 10 says, Whoever sows to please their flesh, from their flesh will reap this destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, will from the Spirit from the Spirit will, will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Let us not grow weary in doing good. Let us not grow weary in sowing seed because we just don't see anything happening. Your job is to sow. We are the sowers. God makes it grow. I want to share just two testimonies and then I'm going to close. I remember when I first moved to Petra Tief, um, I, I, I've told you guys many times before, I moved to Petra Tief to, to sort my life out with the Lord. And I, I, um, I started working at SM Motors and being a young guy, I wanted a really nice car. So I bought a really nice car, Golf GTI. And um, if I could do it all again, I wouldn't buy the car. I'd just buy something simple and save some money maybe, store. <laughs> and um, the fuel pump broke on my car. And because I bought such a nice car, I didn't have anything extra at the end of the month. 
to buy a new fuel pump. And back then, I remember it cost 1,500 Rand. This is in 1995, when you filled up your car basically. Well, I would put 20 Rand in my car and drive for the whole week. Um, so 1,500 Rand was a lot of money. And um, I remember praying about it, and I said to my friends, will you guys pray with me about it? And, and one of my friends came, and he, he, a week later, he came to me and said, hey, Sheldon, I, I really believe God wants to, wants to fix your fuel pump. And at first my brain was like, because I was a motor mechanic, I was like, how's God going to do that? Is he just going to? And the guy handed me an envelope with 1,500 rand. And I remember I'd just come back to the Lord. I'd just come back to the Lord. So I had this weight of my, my past, the sin that I, I had had before that, I, I, it was still fresh in my memory, and I couldn't understand how God could love me so much. That was the fruit of that guy sowing into my life. He sowed seed. He had 1,500 rand. He felt God said, give it. So he gave it to me. But it didn't... Okay, I'm sure God increased it on his side. I, I, in fact, I know God increased it on his side. How he received the blessing, I don't know. But how it grew in my life was like, how can I not serve a God that loves me so much? I remember going home and um, just, just crying. I was just like, I, I don't understand. I don't understand. And I grew from that. God, God used that to make me grow. God does amazing things with what we give. I'm going to use another money example. I remember one day there was a lady in our cell group. Uh, we were a whole lot of young adults, and she, she, um, she had no food at home. So Kristen and I felt we needed to buy her groceries. Uh, that was back in the day when you could buy a bag of groceries for 50 rand. You know, the bag was bulging for 50 rand. Um, now you just you spend 50 rand at the... You don't leave the packet. I'll carry it out by myself. Um, but back then, we gave her a 50 rand bag of groceries. And we felt a little sheepish about doing it, but it's what we could afford, and it's what God told us. God told us to buy, go buy her some groceries. That's what we could afford. But we were also going to the States in a couple of weeks. And I remember somebody came and knocked on our door, and they gave us an envelope. And in that envelope was 500 US dollars. And we remembered that we had spent 50 rand on this lady. So 50 to 500, I think it was like about 10 to 1 back then. All I know is there was that day that I really decided God doesn't know how to do maths because his multiplication is on another level. Okay, I want to see the calculator God uses. But I felt so blessed. Um, and the reason I use two money things, because I want to say this, if God can do that with money, what can he do with your time? What can he do with the gift that he's given you? What can he do with your service? What can he do with anything that is in your basket? God will multiply it and make it grow like you cannot believe. And those are just two little examples. Whoops. Little examples of what God... They're massive, but... If you get what I'm saying, if God can do that with money, what can he do with you? With your gifts? So, Father, as we look at the value of seed the last two weeks... We, we read your scripture that said we, we shouldn't sow sparingly, Lord. If we sow sparingly, we'll reap sparingly. And Lord, we're a, we're a, a town, a part of a body of believers in Peter Tief. Lord, we want to see 100,000 souls come to know you, Lord. And I realize, Lord, that we cannot keep the seed to ourselves to reach 100,000. And the seed that you have placed in every one of our baskets, Lord, I pray that this week we would go, go out and so generously into our town, into the hearts of people, that we would sow your word generously, Lord. That we would sow, if it's our possessions, whatever it is, that we would sow it generously, Lord. If it's our time, that we would sow it generously. If it's the gifts of the Spirit, that we would not hold it to ourselves because we feel like maybe it's just too bold or we're not bold enough or whatever it is, I pray that even with your gifts, Holy Spirit, that you have given to us, that we would sow it generously this week into our town. 
And that we wouldn't just do it this week. That we would do it every day. I pray, Lord, that as we sow, that we would feel your pleasure. And that to see a soul come to know you, Jesus Christ. Because that's what it's all about, our sowing. That that would honor you. Help us to glorify you in absolutely everything we do and say, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So this is back on, yes. This is what I'd like you to do uh, this morning before we go and enjoy tea. I really feel it's important that we pray for each other. So if you're a couple sitting in church, go find another couple. Be about three or four in a group. But I want you to pray this week that we pray for each other, that we could go out and sow into our town. Ask each other, what can we sow this week? If it's the Word of God, if it's time, whatever it is, that we would have just, that we would sow it, man. That we would have the energy to do it. You know, think about time. If we give time, he who, has, who gives to the sower, he who gives the seed, God will give you more time back. Hey? I don't know, it's the principle in Scripture. So pray for each other. Spend some time praying for each other. So find a couple or three or four people and pray for each other, and then we're going to go and have some coffee together.